Welcome everybody. This is the fourth listening session on this topic that I'm doing. Uh, we had three others in Silver Spring with uh, different audiences. Uh, some overlap in this room too, but uh, hopefully we'll all be famous. We'll have uh, millions of viewers on Facebook watching this and, and everybody's going to be interested in parking. But really the reason why we're here is, is to have a frank discussion, an open discussion about uh, you know, what the parking lot districts are, what they do, how they're funded, what is the fiscal health of the Silver Spring parking lot district, uh, what does the future look like, and to get feedback and to listen to ideas that people may have uh, on how the parking lot district could function. Uh, moving in the forward, what services we could provide, and uh, how we could benefit the community in general. Okay, so it's it's a back and forth. If you have questions, stop me at any time. You can ask me questions. I'm willing to answer them. Or if you want to wait till the end, that's fine too. Either way is okay. Uh, so just a little bit about the Silver Spring Parking Lot District. The Parking Lot District we operate manage and maintain about 11,100 spaces in Silver Spring. And only 10% of them are the highly visible parking meters on the street. So it's, it's only 10% or 1,100 of those are on street spaces uh, that most people see and associate with parking. Uh, but most of our inventory is off street. So we own 10 garages, we operate and maintain 10 garages and seven other lots in Silver Spring. Uh, in terms of our sources of revenue, uh, we have about $12.7 million of revenue that comes in through the parking lot district each year, and most of them comes in through fees and fines. Uh, there's a little bit of other uh, income that comes in from investment income because we are an enterprise fund. Uh, most of our revenues and expenses are kept separate from the general fund which is uh, the, the government uh, uses for various purposes. The funds within the parking lot district are governed by Chapter 60 in the county code that specifies what we can use these funds for. Uh, and most of it is used to operate and maintain the uh, uh, parking lot district and to do things that help the urban district in general in Silver Spring in the CBD. We used to have a ad valorem tax for the parking lot district in, and we have three different parking lot districts, Bethesda, Silver Spring and Wheaton. Uh, we used to have a parking lot district tax that was set to 0% in FY16, so a few years ago. We used to get about $8 million through that tax earlier. Since the time this was set to 0%, we do not get that revenue anymore. So in, in, in a sense, the parking lot district truly is an enterprise fund at this point where uh, parking fees and fines is what's paying for everything that happens within the parking lot district. So that's the only major source of revenue coming in. In terms of expenses, like I said, most of our operating costs for these 10 garages, uh, seven lots, and the on-street spaces is about $11.7 million a year. We do also, in addition to out of that operating cost budget, fund about three FTEs on the Silver Spring Urban District uh, that provide some safety security services in addition to what we typically provide. We also have a capital, I, I wouldn't call it improvement, I'll call it capital maintenance fund, which is typically used about $2.7 million each year, which is typically used for repairs in the major garages that we own, concrete steel repairs, things like that. And the third biggest expense that we have is we support the urban district activities. So the Silver Spring Urban District, about 85% of their budget is paid for using parking fees and fines. Uh, that comes out to be about $2.6 million each year. So that's how the expenses work in the uh, Silver Spring parking lot district. I have a map here uh, that shows you know, the boundary of the uh, parking lot district, what lots and what garages we own. Uh, 
within that boundary if we ever need to come back to it. We, I, I, I tend to forget, but we number our garages and lots, and I, you know, sometimes just out of habit, I'll say garage five, assuming everybody knows what garage five is. So if you don't, please remind me, and I'll, I'll try and get back to the map or give more details. Yes. But, but yes, so this is, we'll, we'll get to that point. Very, very good question. Uh, so going back to the operating expenses, and this is literally in order of magnitude of what we spend our money on uh, from our operating expenses. Most of our money, the, the biggest chunk goes to uh, utilities. We own, like I said, 10 garages. That's like owning 10 buildings. We have a lot of lights in there, uh, gas, water. We have fire suppression systems. We have all these elevators, all of these systems that require utilities. So that's a big chunk of our cost. One of the garages, which is the NOAA garage, we rent. We do not own that. So we have a rental fee. We do make more money, uh, revenue from that facility than what we pay for the rental. Uh, the next biggest cost is our security services. We have uh, contracted security service that uh, go out 24-7 to all locations. Well, not 24-7, till late in the night. Uh, all, all locations. And it's not you know somebody stationed at each location, but they do have a tour where they drive around and go through the entire facility. Two of our garages, the Town Square garage and the Wayne Avenue garage, uh, they are gated garages, so we have staffing there, and that's what the garage management cost is. It's essentially paying for the staffing of having somebody there uh, between the hours of 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, Janitorial services, all of these facilities, we have janitorial staff, contracted staff. All of these are essentially contracted services. They're not you know, in-house county uh, folks doing this. Uh, janitorial services where they're cleaning, picking up trash, all these other things that happen in these facilities uh, that they keep up with day in and day out. Enforcement, we've got to make sure that uh, if there is a time limit on a parking space for turnover reasons. If you want to serve a particular business, you want to make sure that people are not parking long term in a very highly desirable spot where you have short term needs. Uh, we need enforcement, so that's a big cost. Uh, typical maintenance, no removal. All of our garages, all of the parking spaces need some kind of revenue control system. We need to be able to accept money and manage and maintain and repair those systems. So those costs are there. Uh, almost 40% of our revenue comes in using credit cards. So 12.7 million, that's a lot of credit card usage and those credit card fees do add up. So that's a big cost that we're working with. Fortunately, the county does have a, a very good credit, credit card processor because we're such a large entity and we do everything batched together. We do get a good rate on that. And then finally, we have citation processing for the people that do unfortunately get a ticket. Uh, if they want to schedule a court hearing, all of those things need to be done. Uh, so that's another cost that we have. And then the collection of fine and fee revenue. So that's where most of our operating expenses go to. So what have we, recent capital improvements that we've made? We've uh, recently, in Silver Spring, uh, we've upgraded all the on-street meters to now accept credit cards and they're smart on-street meters. Earlier we had the meters and some of the garages still have it uh, that do not have uh, credit card capability and we have no way of knowing uh, you know, when the meter is damaged or they're not working. These newer smart meters, single space meters, we have a lot more information on what's happening with that meter. It helps with a lot of things including making sure that there's no theft and things like that. Uh, we've included new pay-by-space machines, which are these big boxes uh, that you see there in some of our garages. Uh, we've replaced, as we upgrade the payment systems, we're replacing the older single-space meters with these uh, multi-space meters, and they're primarily used in a pay-by-space environment, which is 
You know, you go park in a space, you remember your space number, you go to the machine, put in the space number, and you pay for it. So that way, it's easier than uh, having individual meters, and it costs a lot less, and it allows for multiple payment methods. So you can now do credit card, you can pay by coin, or you can even use pay by cell. Uh, we do use pay by cell throughout the county. We support two vendors, Mobile Now and Park Mobile. Uh, so either vendor, it's the same uh, rate structure or anything uh, that, would, that would be with the county. So you're not getting different charges by using a different vendor. We do have some upcoming capital needs that need to be funded. Uh, a lot of our garages, five of our garages, have elevators that are about 18 to 20 years old that need to be modernized. And uh, that's a, a, a big uh, risk for us moving forward that we really need to address soon uh, so that we can keep those garages open and functional. Uh, when elevators are out of service for ADA reasons, for access and egress reasons, uh, we do need to shut down above a certain level if the elevators are not functional. So we want to keep those elevators in service as long as we can and uh, have the garages functional. I said that you know utility costs were one of our biggest costs, so we are doing uh, LED lighting upgrades, which is changing the lights to be LED uh, lights. We've done that in some locations, but we have a lot more to do. And uh, that's a, a, a good, good savings in terms of operating costs, but we do need some capital uh, to buy those lights and have them installed. And of course, facility painting as Silver Spring is trying to uh, uh, re uh, get, get more uh, downtown activity happening and all these festivals and people coming here. We want to make sure that our facilities are clean and bright and people feel safe when they come and park in our facilities. I also wanted to talk about the po possible impact of delaying some of these m uh, capital needs. So if, if we were to delay the elevator modernization a few years, and uh, if the elevator stopped functioning, we could see impacts of anywhere between 300 to 800 spaces. And that does have a revenue impact, too. So we want to keep that uh, functional as much as possible. That's really the big critical item that we need to address. The LED lighting, the facility painting, those are good add-ons that we can have. But the really critical one is the elevator modernization that we want to address. We've also, over the years, gotten several requests for other things that uh, people want us to do, more security, uh, more staffing at the garages for longer hours. Like I said, we do management up to 9 p.m. Uh, we've, when we have events on Saturdays and Sundays, uh, we typically don't have staffing here. And we've, people have asked about, you know, can we have staffing during those hours? But all of those have fiscal impacts, and currently they're not in place. And we would like to, to have some of that moving forward. So when the elevator is not functional, uh, I cannot have uh, above a certain level open. I have to shut it down. So the second level on, I have to shut it down so, so that it's ADA accessible. Or if, even if I put all the ADA spaces at the lower level and people park on top and there's an emergency, somebody has a heart attack or, God forbid, something on the seventh floor, the fire department needs to get there. Now they have to walk up stairs with all their equipment to get to that person, or they cannot transport that person back then. So they use the elevator for emergencies, and it affects. So there are several reasons why we need that. So like I mentioned, the, the parking lot district is an enterprise fund, and it's kind of like a household. So we, you know, we have our revenue coming in, which is the income. Then we have our expenses. We also have a county policy of having a 25% uh, fund balance policy. And that 25% is 25% of the following year's operating expense. So we want to make sure we have uh, some money in reserve for any unknown emergencies, uh, facility closures, revenue volatility. So you know something happens, there's an economic downturn. 
Uh, people stopped parking for some reason. I know uh, when we had the red line shut down, we had an impact at that time. So a lot of things can affect uh, revenue. So we want to keep that 25% policy in place, which is a good policy. And that equates to about three or three and a half million dollars that needs to be in our reserve. There have been times when we had a lot of money in our fund. And if it is more than that, there's no reason to say that it has to be exactly 25%. There are times when it's more than 25%. Mm -hmm. Yes, and again, what those funds can be used for is defined in Chapter 60. I can only use them for certain purposes. I cannot use it to spend in Bethesda or anywhere else. It has to be spent for certain purposes in the Silver Spring District. So this is a, a uh, status flow, uh, status quo cash flow. So each year as we go through our operating budget for the uh, county, for the parking lot district, we do a six year cash flow just to see what does it look like for the next six years. And I know there are a lot of numbers here and I'll point out what's important. I don't want people to, to focus on, you know, the dollars and cents of everything going up and down, but really focus on the trends. Uh, Ma'am, you pointed out a very good thing earlier. So th the first line on there is our beginning fund balance. So in 2020, we had about almost $15 million at the beginning of the year in our fund. And then we have our revenues in 2020. We are anticipating about $15.6 million in revenue coming in. And then we have our expenses below that. So paying for the urban districts, our capital budget, our operating budget, and all of that turns out to be about 17.5 million. So if you look at the revenue, which in this particular year is 15.5 million, we're spending 17.4 million. That beginning balance, which was about 15 million, was a lot more in prior years. And this trend where we've been spending more than we're bringing in has been going on for some time and we've been eating into that reserve. And that's why this six year cash flow is important. Each and every year as we go through the budget, we look at what's happening over the next six years. And what I was trying to show in this slide is if we keep up with this trend, in this six year cycle, we will not be able to maintain our 25% fund balance policy. Yes. The revenue line, the second line on the chart, mm -hmm. that represents what you're bringing in purely, based Correct. on fees and parking, yes. people are paying for parking. Has that been going down? That must be already trending down for you to project out this kind of, because it jumps from 15 million to 12 million and then kind of stays at 12 million the whole time. Yes, What's so that, that 15.5 million is because of a one-time sale of a small piece of property that brought in some revenue, which is why that is 15.5 million. But our typical revenue each year is about 12.7, 12.8 million. And that has been kind of flat. Ah, okay, so in the previous years you were about yes. 12 million. Yes, correct. Thank you. And that's what we're projecting moving mm -hmm. forward, unless right. we see a change in trend. Uh, right now we've had some changes, Discovery used to be here, they've moved sure. out, so that affected some of our parking revenue, uh, things like that. But we are seeing some of that come back too, but it's flat at this point. We're not seeing the explosive growth in revenue. Or going down. Meaning or going down. We've had yeah. a kind of a consistent revenue in the Silver Springs PLD for a while, let's say. Yes. Give or take in terms of- Fees and funds. In terms of fees and funds. Yes, that's So correct. you haven't necessarily seen seen it go down for a particular reason can set you know in a, or go up for a particular reason so no that's interesting okay no, uh with, with the discovery you know i know they moved their headquarters out but a lot of their employees are still here so all those people that used to park in the kenneth street garage in mm -hmm. garage nine they're now parking in the cameron street garage a good portion of them so they're still here, still here. Right. in the other building in discovery they're just not in their headquarters but they're bringing in that revenue. So now I'm going to ask a more kind of in the weeds question. Mm -hmm. So I know that there's several garages in the district that have levels that are inaccessible now because of uh, maintenance issues. Why? 
Yes. How about there? Okay. I was told that there was two. Maybe there was only one. So then that doesn't impact that many spaces. I guess that was Correct. fewer spaces available. The revenue has still stayed the same. That was my asking. No. So our space count has not changed as much in Silver Spring. So we do a demand study every five years in Silver Spring to look at what's happening in Silver Spring in general. Our demand has been kind of the same. Our utilization has not changed as much. Our occupancy, we do have plenty of space available. So if, if occupancy goes up, we do have the capacity to accommodate it. There are some spa spots that you, know, you may not have parking right where you want it, but a block away you do have parking. Isn't there a logical to, I mean, I'm looking at roads that appear to be much more congested and that people are going places in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a certain logic that more, if there are more cars on the road, there are more people in the parking spaces? Or it doesn't, it doesn't translate that way? Or? Well, it, it depends on where they're going, right? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah, if, if their destination were all in Silver Spring, and when that's happening. So if it's happening in the evenings and the nights and the weekends when we're not charging for parking, okay. it doesn't really make a difference. So they're using the facility, but we're not getting the revenue from it. So that's, that is definitely part of all of this discussion is to look at the different options. What are we going to do about this trend and how do we get around that is what these listening sessions are all about, is to talk and have that discussion with the community, with the business community, uh, with the residents and everybody else is, uh, you know, we have some ideas of how we can get around it, but I'm sure people have other ideas too. You, you mentioned one. I've got several great ideas from the other sessions that I had too. So yes, uh, that we, we will get to that too, yes. Okay, so any more questions on this? So this is essentially trying to say, this is status quo, we do nothing. I'm not increasing my capital budget to address the elevators, I'm keeping my operating expenses pretty much the same. Not doing anything, we're going into the negative. I'm gonna go back to this side. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, in this slide, what I did was I added in the cost for uh, fixing the elevators. You see we have five different garages and they're highlighted in red there on those slides under the capital budget. So adding that cost in to fix those elevators puts us further into the red as we, <laughs> as we move forward through the six year period. So, what would it take to get us to be at that 25% policy level? Uh, so in this slide, what I was trying to show is to get to that level, we need about $5.5 million a year. How we get there is yet to be determined, but that's the amount of revenue that we need to come in, in addition to what we're getting in right now, to maintain our 25% level, or close to that in the six year time frame and fix the elevators. Yes, yes, absolutely, and fix the elevators. Yes. So that's, that's essentially what we're trying to do is figure out how we can fix this shortfall. Uh, there are several options. One is we increase rates. Two is we extend the hours. We can add weekends as a third option. You mentioned uh, Saturday. It could be Saturday and Sunday. I had uh, several people tell me that, that they would not be opposed to having even Sunday charged, especially during uh, April through November. So there were a lot of people that come here from outside for uh, events, and they felt that a minor fee, like a you know, flat fee on a Sunday or a Saturday, would not be that much of an issue. Now, whether that's done or not, we don't know, but this, the, the, the idea of this whole listening session is to come up with different thoughts and ways that we can fix that gap. Yes? Since you guys aren't charging on the weekends, and mm -hmm. I've used the week cars on weekends many times, are you even, how, what kind of handle do you have on how full those garages are? Like how, how much you can, you know, because yeah. 
How can you estimate you know, the model of charging on the weekends, like you said? You so know? the two major garages that are typically used on the weeks, totally full on the weekends. Wayne Street, <laughs> Wayne Street, and Town Square, we do have occupancy sensors right. in them. So we do know the occupancy in those garages, and they're typically full about 80 to 85 percent yeah. uh, occupied. Certainly other places that people in this region go on the weekends, lots of those places were paying for parking. Correct. Uh, and, so. and, and it doesn't have to be all locations. It could be just, just these two locations, and we have free parking in other places. So people that want to have free parking can park maybe a, at a different location. That's another idea that was floated around. Yeah. Have you got, um, once again, just an idea, maybe, um, I don't know if this would be a lot to manage, maybe determining when there's specific events that happen, like most of the time when I park in the garage is because like I'm going to a big event that's happening at the Fillmore, just right mm -hmm. now, just passing the Fillmore. There's all these people in line right now going on. Mm -hmm. A huge line of people that are at for a bit. So have you maybe considered Maybe if it's not necessarily a flat rate every Saturday and Sunday, maybe focusing on things that are event-based where you know you're getting a lot of uh, people coming in on, for this specific event. Correct. So that, that was also suggested is when you have events, only during those times you have charges and maybe not a low flat fee, maybe if it's a very large event and it's at the Fillmore and you have this garage 1400 space garage right across from it, uh, yeah, it might make sense to charge more just during that event. When you guys, mod I'm sure you modeled some of those options, does it get you where you need to be? Uh, we, yes, we will get to okay. that, yes. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, on street parking on Saturday, mm -hmm. you have to pay, don't you? Uh, not, in not in it's Silver Spring, not in Silver Spring. It's free on Saturday? It is free on Saturday and Sunday. Hmm? Don't look at the signs. The signs are wrong. Oh, okay. Because yes. I thought the signs Rich you sign. pay for parking. I would love to know where the sign oh, is so we can fix it. They're pretty much mm -hmm. all over the place. Signs that say you have to park, you have to pay on Saturday. I'll look on street parking. Certainly on, on Fenton and uh, Cameron. They were there the last time I looked. Yeah. I will make a note. I will make a note. Visitors get very confused by that. that uh, like Wayne, for example, that they they don't understand it's free on Saturday and Sunday and kind of lost. Can I ask something else you probably don't yeah. want to talk about? And that is, I mean, if there's a specific zone we're talking about here, downtown Silver Spring, mm -hmm. what about charging businesses in this area that are benefiting by all these people coming here? I mean, is so, so that's what kind of what the ad valorem tax was, is... Oh. <laughs> I mean, we got to bring it up just to talk about it. So. True, true. So that, that was what the ad valorem tax was. And that is, again, an option here. It's not a, a very uh, popular option, nice. but it is an option. The different parking lots mm -hmm. have different ways of paying. I mean, you can go into a couple lots, you get your ticket, and you pay when you leave. Mm -hmm. And other lots, you have to guess when you're going to get through your appointment Absolutely. and hope that you pay enough so you don't get a fine for yeah. not putting enough money in. Mm -hmm. um, is there any way to standardize so that you get your ticket and then you pay when you leave? Because it's kind of, I mean, I park in certain parking lots simply because a lot of times I have an appointment and I don't know how long it's going to last. So I go, to, I go to a garage where I just have to pay when I'm leaving, and I may have to walk a little ways longer, but at least I don't have to worry about it because I'm not into using all the phone stuff. Correct. Okay. So, you know, I'm old, <laughs> so I still use money. Well, I, 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 I appreciate that. But, yeah, so our, our attempt at doing that without having to change all the infrastructure was to introduce the pay by phone where we allow you to park using mobile now or park mobile. Mm -hmm. And I think we're probably one of the only or very few jurisdictions that allow you to stop your session when you're that done. You're losing, you were losing a lot of money off me because I used to park in the Amherst garage in Wheaton, paid the $6 every single day. And then when they started with the app, mm -hmm. 545 for the same hours. Yeah. And I thought, well, Montgomery County did do that. But, uh. well, no, so, no, no, well, what we're doing is we're sharing 
uh, our benefit with sure, the users. I appreciate because that. Because when we use pay by sell, the county doesn't incur any cost. Mm. Mm -hmm. When you use a coin or you use a credit card, we either pay credit card fees or I have to now pay to maintain that piece of equipment and collect those coins. When you're using pay by sell, I just get a direct transfer to our bank account. There's no cost associated with it. So instead of just eating all of that, we said to make this popular and popularize it, when you use pay by sell, you can stop your session. So you pay for the time you park. And we're sharing the benefit with yeah, the users. That made, that made sense, but it, it, I was interested to see that even the full day charge was less. Yeah. Which was a hidden benefit of using the yeah. app. I don't know how to, do you know how the usage has been in terms of district wide? Um, yes. So district wide in Silver Spring, it's it's a little less compared to other areas like Bethesda North. Bethesda is a much more pay by sell usage, but in Silver Spring, I'll say that about 40 percent is credit cards, maybe thirty percent or thirty five percent is pay by sell. And the rest is uh, coins. You know, for the, the civic building, mm -hmm. if you did increase the fees, um, it would have a significant impact on the desirability of the civic building. You know, Monday through Friday, we have a lot of community events. Um, I don't know how many of you walked here or drove, but tonight, you know, events like this, yep. where we're making a time commitment, yeah. you don't want to also have to pay if we can avoid that. Oh, yeah. When they increased the, the inconvenience factor here by having the gates down for an additional two hours, even though it's not for pay, it's a real nuisance for people who are really trying to be civically engaged. It's not a large number of the overall people who use that garage, but for some of us, not me. Well, and that, that's just, yeah, that's my point because, you know, the civic building is a county owned facility just like the garages. And the Fillmore, for example, also is. Uh, you know, in partnership with the county as well. Mm -hmm. So just to ha I think to have some synergy and uh, overall vision um, would be good with taking into consideration that it, it would, you know, make the civic building less desirable. In fact, when folks do book the civic building, what our key selling point is the affordability, the cost. Mm -hmm. Because when you're looking at having an event here, um, one of the, the our top selling points is there's free parking and we don't ask it they ask it and they say we've heard you had free parking is that true that's why that's why we would love to be there and uh, well and Eric thank you you've written to me too with the same comment and I'm taking it to heart so yes uh, I, I agree if citizens are coming here for they're investing their time uh, for a public meeting or for a community meeting we shouldn't, uh, we should find a way if possible to accommodate that. So we're, we're looking to see if we can maybe for that have defined validation system set up so, uh, you know, we can accommodate that. Oops, sorry. Uh, but yeah, that, that, I, I would, we, I think we, that that's, you, a, that's a great innovation right there, just to use the validation. Your, 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 your ideas are great. So yes, we do need to work together. Um, we just need to find the right way to make it happen. Okay. Well, in your yep. case, it's one part of the county impacting another part of the county, so definitely you guys should be talking. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So we should be working together and we'll, we'll figure out a way. Technology is great. So we'll, we'll find some way around it. Okay. Well, what, have you, I noticed they developed new revenue streams. Mm -hmm. Do you have ideas already for that or is it? So ad revenue within our garages, we're looking into that. We tried a local ad thing in our garages. It wasn't very successful and it's not because, uh, you know, I don't think it's because people don't want to advertise. It's, I think it was because we tried to do it ourselves and we're not ad people. So I think I'm going to recognize my limitations and this time around what we're doing is we're going to put out an RFP and see if we can get a ad firm to come in that does this typically and give them all of our uh, garages and tell them here, go ahead, come up with a plan, find the ads, 
get the revenue and we can find out some way of splitting the revenue or something like that. So. I know you, you also managed, you said the Bethesda Urban District uh, parking garage and parking district as well. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been there and they have different pricing on different levels. Uh, so it's like a short term, short term parking is the first two or three levels and it's a higher rate. And yeah. then the higher you go up, it's less rate and you can park for longer. Is that, is that something that I'm... No. Or so I'm the, way, the way the PLDs... Uh, the way we've structured is on street is always the most expensive. And the reason is one, we have the shortest amount of inventory on street. Two, it's the most valuable space. And we want to discourage people from circling the block, trying to find a space. So the message, even with Silver Spring, the message we want to reinforce through pricing is if you're going to a destination and you're going to be there more than an hour or two, you're better off just going straight off street rather than trying to find an on street space. What's and the pricing on the street right now? In Bethesda? Oh, uh, here? Here or in Bethesda? In Bethesda, it's two twenty five an hour on street. Uh, they do have the uh, dynamic rate structure there, so we can go up to three twenty five, but we haven't gone that high there yet. We've gone only to two twenty five. In Silver Spring, it's capped at a dollar, I think. There's no fluctuation. There's no Variation. So that might be. That might be a good place. I'm not saying there's tons of uh, you know spots here in downtown Silver Spring where you could do that, but mm -hmm. is there more spots I'm guessing in Bethesda? No, Silver Spring, Spring actually has more. So Silver Spring has 11,100 spaces. Bethesda has about 8,000 spaces that we manage. Well, I I, I don't know. For my suggestion, I would I'd be in favor of increasing the on-street parking to to push people to the garages because. Yeah. Folks usually it comes to sit and build it here longer than a short term. True. Yeah. So so in terms of pricing structure, we want to keep on street the most expensive, then lots and then garages. And then even within that structure, based on demand, you could have a highly utilized garage more expensive and a less utilized garage less expensive. So if you have an event and somebody doesn't want to pay the higher rate, they could pay a lower rate and walk a couple of blocks question about garage 61 specifically mm -hmm. there's a lot of retail on the lower level mm -hmm. does does the county uh, receive revenue from that or they don't own the that yeah, retail it's, it's it is not part of the parking lot district so they're they're different Peterson companies is the one that manages it we do not get the revenue from that oh. Which one's right, uh, right across yeah, yeah, behind so you know you have Cold Stone and Chick Fil A. Oh, and all. so that's not a county. No, those are retail. They're not. They do not come back to the county, or to the parking lot district. They probably pay business taxes and all of those things, but that's probably just in the development. Yeah. So that was part of the development. Yeah. But their landlord would be like every county, like the the Chick Fil A. Their yeah. landlord is Montgomery County. I, I don't think so. Think so. No. I think what, what part of the, the whole project and the revitalization of downtown Silver Spring was we're going to get private sector folks to invest in downtown Silver Spring. The county will invest in downtown Silver Spring. So I think that was must have been. Uh, so Peterson rents out those, they leases out those businesses, yeah. but the garage revenue above is all the is county. county. Yeah. Okay. So the county is responsible for the maintenance and all the revenue, but who actually owns the property? Is that Peterson also? You know, I don't know. It's probably just that lower level. That would be my guess. The garage is owned by the county. I know that for sure. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure about the retail who owns yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Mark Peterson. Yeah. Since they're leasing it. Okay, so that was, and in terms of, uh, we talked about ad revenue, but there were other ideas thrown about too that maybe we should have some uh, uh, amenity services in underutilized garages. So uh, like in garage 555, have a you know, waterless car wash or a tire changing service or something like that. Can you write the maps if you don't mind? Yeah, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the Bonifin Dixon garage, which is uh, right across from Metro, where you see garage five there mm -hmm. 
on uh, Bonifant and Dixon. Can you? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I kind of throw something different in here, but I, you, you reminded me the lot, um, what, what's the name of the lot that's across from Tasty Diner? They've got some uh, electric car charging uh, there. Is that something that's part of uh, you know, increased expenses? Is there any way to turn that into a revenue uh, so we do, source? We do have uh, electric vehicle charging in many of our facilities, not all, uh, in, in some of our facilities. They do pay for parking. Whoever uses it pays for parking, and they pay the cost of the electricity that we pay. So we pay a certain amount for electricity. That cost is passed it on to who? It's very modest. So a typical charge uh, for it lasts about three or four hours in our uh, spots, and it costs about two bucks, two two dollars fifty cents. That's just the charging fee, and then whatever the parking fee is on top of that. Here's another wild idea question, but mm -hmm. you know, you, you have these are all real estate pretty much uh, locations. And Correct. With Silver Spring, the last five, ten years, Silver Spring's just building up, up, up. Everything's coming mm -hmm. up. Um, is there any parking garage that you have designated as like highly desirable that you could take the same model and say, that whole first level, we're going to turn it into retail? And then we'll lace it out as a parking lot district as a retail space, and then we'll keep all the upper levels uh, because it's such a desirable location. That that is that is another great idea. Uh, they, it would it would mean some changes in, and I'm writing this down because okay. that's part of all of this is to write down, uh, make sure I note all these ideas, which are great. As I'm thinking right now, too, the garage. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, Probably Ripley Street, but you yeah, have that's 555. Yes. Is that 555? Okay, you have um, a lot of new um, living quarters yeah. coming up there, and I'm starting to see some businesses and you know a retail space maybe on that front end, yeah. right between the Metro and downtown Silver Spring. So we have awesome. under under Dixon Avenue, we have this uh, uh, big space that's. Uh, where we have the parking garage on top, that was one idea where we thought maybe we could have a, a retail location there. They're maybe thinking of doing maybe even a bike station there, uh, like a big bike station there. So that's one idea. The Purple Line's coming through there too, so there's going to be a lot going on there at that time. Yeah, yeah so, and, and that is an underutilized garage, so yeah, that's a good idea. I feel like Leggett a while ago, a uh, former county executive put out some kind of a uh, request for ideas from developers. Yeah, so we did the RFP for 555 uh, to see if we could do an arena, arena. there. Yes. Yeah. The other location was Garage 4, also people have asked about maybe that could be a potential site for an arena or some other development like that. Uh, but again, those are still ideas that need to be. Yep. The garage floor is the one by the Greyhound station? Yep. That is correct. I know that one of the ideas that was brought up, actually wasn't an idea, it was a comment that was brought up at the Urban District meeting about resident parking and the you know, monthly permits that I know that you guys issue. However, and then there was all of the scoff laws who park overnight for free and what you can do to mitigate that, actually generate revenue such that people are not using our parking lots uh, as their residence over, overnight when it's free. Well, if, if we're not charging during the nights and they're parked there during the nights, we really cannot do anything about that. But they, we, what we want to prevent is people storing vehicles in our facilities and then driving out at a time when the gates are up, or uh, you know, some, and that can really only happen in the gated garages because if you're in a non-gated garage, you have to keep paying to keep your uh, mm. session ongoing. And and part of our enforcement, and enforcement goes through all of these locations, is they note if a car is in the same spot over and over again. Right, but I think if I remember the conversation. Mm -hmm. It's a, there's a pretty long grace period before something drastic happens. 
Yeah, so before we tow away a vehicle, I think it's about 14 days, because we have to give them a warning, give them time to rectify it, then we issue them a ticket, and only after that can we tow it. And the towing is done through the police. We do not tow it. We call the uh, county police, and they have a towing thing that goes and does all the towing. But again, uh, I, I, I understand, you know, Silver Springs changing. We used to be just an employment center. Now it's, you know, we have residents, we have this mix, and we have to find a way to accommodate all the users. I got another crazy idea, but yeah. I'll, I'll throw it out there. Okay. Um, with all the new residents, all the folks coming in, I know a lot of young people mm -hmm. that are looking for parking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they try to game the system. Mm -hmm. They'll wait until the you, you can park for free, and then they're going to wake up early or move whatever they need to so that they don't have to pay. But I don't think that they know that they could get a monthly membership uh, parking pass. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know if there would be an advertising campaign to all the, the apartment complexes in the area, and maybe they wouldn't even want it because they may offer parking themselves or at a premium price. I know when I lived around here, it's a thing $150 a month or $250 a month. There was something to that extent. But, but you could maybe market to all the young people that. Absolutely. So that was another idea that came up in other places too was we really need to brand our monthly parking. We call it PCS and it, that's been, it's called a parking convenience sticker and it's been that way for a while, uh, for a long, long time. And the reason they didn't call it a monthly permit, I believe, was because monthly kind of indicated discounted where the PCS really is not a discounted rate. It's just allowing you to pay for the entire month all at one time. So as we get into maybe changing our long-term monthly rates to allow maybe some discounts, we should probably also brand it as monthly parking. So somebody actually asked me, why are all these levels in your garage reserved for a company named PCS? Because there are some locations where we have signs that say PCS parking. <laughs> so, so and, and you know, that was, wow. I didn't really think of it that way, but that's a great. <laughs> the other thing is, and I would say that's, you know, like I said, at one point in my life, I was a long-term parker in a, in a PLD garage. Mm -hmm. The um, I when I first started and and I looked up to see I assumed that a, that a monthly would be that there'd be a discount because yeah. that is what people assume and when I saw that there wasn't one I thought oh I'm not going to buy it because I can do it on my phone yeah. it's easier and then I I won't I'm not at risk of losing any money in the day that I'm sick or I decide not I'm working from home whatever had there been a discount I probably would have done it. Even if maybe the math wouldn't have worked out every month, because yeah. it would have been sold to me in a way that I was like, oh, it's convenient. I never have to worry about yeah. the app. I, there were sometimes when the app didn't work, and I, or, you know, I mean, you know, it worked. so even if, and it probably would have just been a very small discount would have been enough to like sell it to me yeah. as a, you know, as a someone who was parking on a daily basis for for convenience. Great. So if the county is considering raising prices, then that would make offering a discount makes sense right. yeah. because you could maybe charge the old price the monthly and then the higher price for just a random person parking. Right. Yeah. And, and the, definitely the advertising. I mean, you have to yeah. go looking to figure out what that is right now, I'll yeah. say. <laughs> and, and a lot of people probably also don't know this. We have something called an AMPM permit, which is you're not paying for the entire month. So say you live in Silver Spring and every day you take a car in the morning, go to work, come back and park at night you can pay just for those and you don't want to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning you can pay just for those two hours or three hours in the morning and if you come in five o'clock and you're there till seven o'clock you can pay for the remaining two hours so it's it's a lesser rate and you're only parking for that a.m. and p.m. so there are other options that we have that uh, people can make use of. I, I, I'll tell you too I was listening to the CEO of Panera Bread uh, yesterday and He's talking about rolling out a subscription for coffee. Mm -hmm. And so they, uh, so folks would go in there to pay a monthly subscription. You can get, if I think his selling point was your cup is always full, mm -hmm. okay? You come in, you get your coffee, you can leave out, you can get coffee anytime during mm -hmm. the day. He said, I think they have a 95% um, 
return rate where the folks will subscribe month after month. Mm -hmm. Maybe a subscription fee too, where I know Planet Fitness uses that model. Almost all the folks are going to that model of a subscription fee. You get their credit card information, they say yes, I want that. With that, there's there's no interruption because you're you're pretty much billing the credit card company every month for it, mm -hmm. and then they have to cancel. Yeah, that may be uh, something as so well we, that would probably be less intensive on staff time. Yeah, we we do not do that with individuals, but when we have like Discovery, they currently they have 150 people that buy this every month. So what we've set up with them is a uh, merchant account and they just do a bank transfer to us directly as an ACH payment. We just send them an invoice, email them an invoice every month and they pay it. So we do that for the larger accounts, but for the individuals we haven't gotten to that point yet. But yeah, that's another idea too. And I think too, you know, I, I'm with the enterprise fund as well, Civic Building mm -hmm. in Cuff is an enterprise fund. And we could set, we, we can set up um, reoccurring payments for folks, especially the ones that, that use the facility frequently. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, it's possible to, to maybe look into that. And folks on our end, the customer actually appreciates it because it's one yeah. less thing that they have to worry about. So. Yeah. Okay. Great. I think it's important also though to communicate mm -hmm. with the public, say you're going to raise the fee. Mm -hmm. Say why you're raising the fees. These garages need elevators. This is how much it costs. I mean, that kind of transparency, I mean, some folks will grouse and say, oh, well, they're raising the prices. But I think if you tell people why you're raising prices and how they will benefit from the price raise, maybe it'll be a little bit easier to accept. Yeah. I have friends who come from out of town and can't believe how cheap the prices are here. Yeah. So yeah. I think <laughs> there's some flexibility there especially since it's going to be running a shortfall mm -hmm. yes. you know, in those out years. I mean, yeah. but I think explaining and even having a public information campaign would be really important to let people know what the needs are and why the prices have to go up. Okay, so we haven't yet gotten to the prices yet, but these are the different options that we talked about. And of course, the last one there was if all fails, we would have to reduce expenses or cut services, which is the last thing that we want to do. Uh, I put in some benefits of having expanded hours and higher rates and things like that was, again, you know, we would be able to better manage demand, parking demand, if we had the flexibility of pricing appropriately based on demand. So if if a certain location was very high in demand and we wanted to move some of that demand other place, we could do that with pricing. And we, we, we have to have that flexibility to charge more in one place and less at the other location. If we have weekends and nights, uh, we have events. If we want to manage event traffic, we can do that too using uh, pricing. So that's, uh, that's another benefit. Uh, where we can still provide, you know, free parking for somebody that's willing to maybe walk a couple of blocks. And uh, if you want to be right next to the event, then you would have to pay a little bit more. Uh, we want to, of course, uh, provide the increased services uh, that people are asking for. We'll be able to continue funding and increase funding for the urban district activities that support uh, downtown Silver Spring and continue to fund the critical infrastructure needs for our facilities. So those are some of the benefits. And we also looked at some research of what other people charge for parking. The first line up there is Silver Spring. And I have it as on street, off street, what hours we charge, the number of hours we charge per day, and do we include a Saturday or not. And you can see. Pretty much Silver Spring in almost all the categories is on the lower end of everything. Yes. But our, I thought off street is a dollar per hour. No, but it's 70 cents an hour. For a parking garage here? Yes. On street is a dollar. On street is a dollar an yeah, hour. Yeah, I thought, oh, sorry. I oh, oh six, so, so, so yes, yeah, yeah, 60 and 61 is those two garages are, the downtown garages are a dollar an hour. 
So again, we charge one of the lowest number of hours in a day. Most places charge to 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. or 10 p.m. Uh, we do not go past 6 p.m. I, I think garage 61 is 7.30. 7, seven yes, yeah, 7 p.m. 7 p.m.? Yeah. So, which is just a nuisance for all the meetings that start here at 7 o'clock. I would definitely take that back. Because if you come at 6.49, yes. you're paying yeah. that dollar. Well, you're paying. Yeah. Is that, that the is that the granularity of dollar? Yeah. Yeah, because it, it, it's at it's 7 then. What do you Technically, you would be. So the parking garage right here. Oh, okay. So if you come before 6.30? 7. 7, sorry. If you come before 7 o'clock, you're going to pay no matter what, at least a dollar. Okay. Unless the meeting lasts after 9, in which case you don't pay. Then you just yeah. leave yeah. it. So we keep the gates. So what we found earlier, we used to lift the gates at 7, but we found that a lot of people were just waiting for 7 o'clock, and they would leave immediately after yeah. the gates went up. So we keep the gates down until 9 p.m. to make sure that the people that park there all day pay for the parking and they're not just using the facility for free. Actually, he makes a good point, though, the, the idea that if you come in at 6.50, mm -hmm. I, um, right, I'm going to pay for that. I'm going to pay for the whole dollar even though my car's only there for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. right? Is that reflected in any ways in, in your <coughs> comparisons with these other districts here in that I mean I've always thought that's kind of unfair frankly but maybe everybody does it. So I don't know most of our gated garages I think all of our gated garages we have a 20 minute grace period so if you come in and you leave within the first 20 minutes you're not charged okay, but and that's standard practice in most facilities that are gated that would work if the grace period is between when you get there and the time that the garage no longer built. So if you get there at a quarter of, you're within the 20 minute grace period. Is that true? Well, they won't give it to you though. I didn't think they would. No. So if you have, you to, have leave to leave within that, that 20 minutes. minutes. Yes. See that. <laughs> right. but, but again, like I said, these are this is great feedback that I can take back and we can come up with a solution that yeah. can work. Yes. But the, can't, isn't the technology there that you could charge me from, uh, you don't need to charge me for those 50 minutes I'm not there mm -hmm. as you do now, right? Using my example of you coming in at 650. Can't you just charge <laughs> me from when I start to approximately when I leave? But you guys don't do it that way. Yeah, we do an hourly mm -hmm. per so hour. Yeah. Okay. So is that reflected in your competition, what you're telling me here? Might be they're giving those people a little so bit on of street, a So on street is typically not that way, but off street facilities are most, most of them are that way. Actually, thinking when you were talking about validation before, that I remember that the, but I didn't think it was. It's not operated by it's Rockville. So it's operated by the city of Rockville. Correct. How? But do, do you guys know how their validation, how that turns out for them? Like, I have used that facility as well, so I'm very familiar with the, with well, the validation. Well, so. in, in Rockville, it is privately owned and operated. Oh, so it's so not operated by the city. It's not, and the city mm -hmm. sold it to Frit, I believe. Oh, so okay. Frit runs it, and it's private. So Rockwell so is that's there. That's why they have the validation. And they have the validation for the businesses to because it's all shop. privately yeah. owned. Oh, I didn't realize that the garage was private. So I've, I've on the off street, very very few cities have off street facilities. Most of them have on street. So I've tried to put in there what's city owned and what's private. And you know some of these locations, and you know we could argue that you know Silver Spring is not the same as D.C. or Philadelphia or or those locations, but they're charging five, six dollars an hour uh, in an off-street facility. I mean, Frederick's charging more. Yeah, Frederick. I would think we could charge more than Frederick. I was I was <laughs> pleasantly surprised. Frederick gates down 24/7. They charge. <laughs> Uh, Saturdays, <laughs> and their rates are higher than ours. But again, so so the, the the point of this is is not to well. You could look at Wheaton. Wheaton charges Saturdays. Right. So uh, the point of this is just to know that there is some flexibility in pricing, and we need to look at that as we move into the future. Another question. Uh, a few years back, I remember hearing a report about smart parking meters that you park and you pay when you drive off. 
which goes back to zero so that someone who comes behind you has to pay whatever the full trade is. We do not do that. Is that an option to consider? Uh, we, I, I don't think it's something that should, yeah, it's, 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 what that means is we now have to in, install sensors that detect if a vehicle is there or not. So there's the maintenance and all the other things associated with that. It's not worth. And it creates ill will among people that think that, you know, hey, why are you double charging me? I, I don't think it's the right business practice to do. You're charging on the weekends because of the mall. I mean, what is the yeah, Wheaton always has been, and it's. I think it's just the kind of. Uh, it's just the location. They they have that traffic on the weekend. Right. So. Although it's here now. That's yeah. It just wasn't historically a long time ago. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at the the options for the race on street, mm -hmm. and you know. So okay. let, let me, let me, before we get into the question, let me just explain what you're looking at so that we all are on the same page. So I have our current rates there and uh, what I've tried to do is provide two options on what the rate structure would be if we included Saturdays and we discounted monthlies a little bit or we didn't include Saturday. So if there was some, uh, uh, you know, feedback that we received that, you know, Saturday is really a no-no, really a no-no, we should try and not do it. So I wanted to provide that option too, to see what that rate structure would be. Again, to fill that five and a half million dollar gap. With this rate structure, I'm not suggesting that all of this be done all at one time. The way we would roll this out, say we were to take option one, in the first year, I would only increase the rates. I wouldn't change the hours, wouldn't do anything. And whatever is in red on this chart is what's changing. So in the second year, I would maybe go to 10 p.m., keep the same Monday through Friday, and then reevaluate again. You know, at the end of the first year, we could reevaluate and see, well, maybe we did better than we thought we would. Maybe more people came to Silver Spring. Maybe we don't need to go to 10 p.m., we just need to go to 9 p.m. So we could evaluate that the second year. The third year we would say, okay, well we did that, now we can decide do we want to maybe extend to 10 p.m. or do we add a Saturday? Do we add a flat free Saturday? Do we add Saturday and Sunday? So it, it gives us some flexibility on how we roll this out. So that was what the two options are. The difference between the options is we're not doing Saturdays in the second option off street. I still want to keep on street on Saturday so that we don't have people trying to find uh, these limited spots and trying to create traffic congestion uh, in, in downtown Silver Spring. It would be great to have a uh, spreadsheet where you can play what if with all these things to see where all the numbers come out. Because you don't have any, I have no, looking at this, I don't have a clue what kind of revenue projections you are thinking about with these two options? Are they neutral? Are they the same? Yeah, they're neutral. Both of these options would get us to the $5.5 million. That's an important yes. thing to know. Okay. Great. Yes, that is correct. I should have mentioned that. Yes, both of these options get us to that $5.5 million. So um, I personally like option one with the three-year rollout. I think it keeps the monthlies uh, which is called PCS there, which I need to change to monthly, <laughs> to a lower rate. So it's discounted compared to the uh, typical rate. And, and it provides that, that discount. And we roll out the rates over multiple years. And it gives us the flexibility of charging more in the highly utilized garages, which is the NOAA Garage 58, 60, and 61, which is Town Square and, uh, and um, Wayne Avenue. And we could have low rates at the other garages, which are not as utilized. Thank you. What I'm seeing that is, uh, you know, right here, you're talking about a lot of private sector businesses. Like just a few blocks away, we have a lot of mom and pop shops um, owned by our immigrant community. And 
they actually invested in downtown Silver Spring years ago, a long time mm-hmm. ago, before all the development came in. And they're kind of being squeezed in every which way right now. And so I want to make sure that that's part of the, the conversation too, because taking away parking or adding higher fees right in front of their business could could even, you know, uh, put more of a strain on them and possibly, you know, shut them down when here they took a chance on us years ago. And that actually is a, a big part of Silver Springs vibrancy. One thing that I noticed you said earlier, which I, I, I actually think is a great idea too, is if you're gonna increase the on-street parking as a premium, um, and if the if the lots or in the garages are at a the lower cost, I think people still may, if it's convenient enough, you know, walk a block or two to still go to those mom and pop shops and you're pushing them off the street and then if you have to run in real quick, you're paying that premium price. But I just want to make sure that, you know, the lots and the garages, if you are going to raise the premium price uh, for the on-street parking, that's considered to keep it at a cost just because I'm thinking about all the small businesses. And I, I, I frequent a lot of them, I talk to a lot of them, they probably would be at this meeting if they didn't have to run their business. And a lot of, you know, a lot of times they're at their business 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. Monday through Sunday. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. or someone from their family is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, yeah, we, so I, like I mentioned in the beginning, we had, this is the fourth one I'm doing about this topic. We did have some small businesses come and they brought up some of these uh, concerns too. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we, in this, in option one, for example, most of the garages would be a dollar an hour, which is still, when we look at that comparison chart, like you said, Frederick was $2 an hour. Uh, so we're not outrageously high in terms of prices. Um, Phantom Village is uh, that area. We, we have a brand new garage there, the Silver Spring Thayer garage. That's a 150 some space garage that has capacity and it's walkable to all of those businesses. So maybe we need to do a little bit more of promoting those locations and uh, helping the businesses understand that there is available capacity close by um, that can help them out. And maybe they have ideas on how to promote it too, so yes. We, we sh- definitely that conversation is is something we need to have. And if you're funding the urban district, you know you could out, have the red shirt team yep. as ambassadors to, to make sure you know they have a special event or something where they get the word out every day, you know, all day long that this is where parking is. It's close by. Maybe yep. you know, working with Roberto or something. There's and you know you you all have mentioned there's a lot going on in Silver Spring at this time. The Purple Line construction, there's Pepco, there's WSSC, there's all this stuff happening, and yes, we're going through a lot of change. But I think at the end of all of this, there is a lot of benefit that's going to come out of uh, all of this for Silver Spring. What's your thought? I mean, you're you're increasing right in option one. You're increasing rates mm-hmm. plus you're expanding the hours mm-hmm. that they're covered. And I would think that there'd be some citizens that push back at that. That's a little too much mm-hmm. to do, right? I mean, give me one or the other, but um, if I'm gonna pay more, why don't, can't I continue to get my break when I leave after nine o'clock or whatever? Yeah, so if we were to rely on only increasing rates and not touching the hours or Saturdays, the rates would have to be more than yeah, what's, yeah, they would really go up to get to that five and a half million. And so that's what I've tried to do with these two options is not increase the rate too much, phase it out so that all this change is not happening in one year, and make it sort of discounted for the monthly so the employees that park here are not suddenly hit with a you know, 20, 30%, 40% increase in the monthly parking. I'm gonna throw out another crazy idea. Okay. It's, it worked here at the Civic Building. Mm-hmm. So you know, one time we had a premium price for Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. Mm-hmm. I looked at the trends, I saw, and this is for the Great Hall and all the rooms, but I looked at the trends and I said, why is our Friday nights not booked every single Friday of the month? It was booked usually two and three times out of the month. We usually would have four Fridays. Mm-hmm. Instead of 
trying to do more advertising and all that type of stuff. I said, what if we projected it, looked at the, the revenue, and actually reduced the cost so we would have a Monday through Friday fee schedule and then a premium on Saturday and Sunday, which we would keep. So it's not like we're, so we actually only reduced the fees on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. What we did was um, found out that instead of it being two or three um, Fridays, mm -hmm. we easily sold it out every Friday. So every single Friday night we have an event here because we lowered the cost, which made it even more desirable for po folks. They had an event, they wanted to take a risk on it. Mm -hmm. they, w they weren't so worried that, oh man, I'm going to spend so much money, I don't know if it's going to be successful. Is there any ways that you could even reduce some fees and see if you would get more people to drive there or park there? Yes, so this, I've, I've presented these options here, but the way the rates are uh, set is through a rate resolution, right? The council sets out a rate resolution that's approved by everybody. Uh, these are the rates that we're going to have. In Silver Spring, the rate resolution currently is rigid. It's fixed. It says this is the rate. That's it. There is no flexibility. Uh, and what we're proposing through this change and everything is to have that flexibility. So like, like in Bethesda, I told you, uh, on street, I can say I have the ability to charge 325 or less. Same thing in the garages. I have the ability in the garages in Bethesda to charge $1.25 or less. So if I saw that trend and I said, you know, yes, uh, this location, you're having an event here, and if we want to discount parking for that, I would have that ability to do just that if it's, a, if it's an overall benefit for the county and for the PLD to make that change, yes. So when we propose this through the budget process, when the county executive submits his budget to council for approval, uh, that's going to be in there is that request to have that flexibility to reduce the rate if needed. So right now I do not have that flexibility. Yes, yet. so that's another thing that we were also, idea that we were thinking about is maybe we extend it to midnight or to 10 p.m. and see what happens uh, the, to, test to test it out. You, can, so, you have control of the hours. You can't change the rates right, right now without yeah. a resolution, but the hours. Right. But but there is a cost to it because now I have to pay staffing. No, for sure. Yes. Okay. So so we 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 have to figure out how to manage that cost within our budget to try it out. Uh, and, and but that is an idea that we we thought about. We did do some uh, research on how many people do that. Uh, we do see a twenty percent drop in occupancy of the garage between so it goes from about 80 some percent to 60 some percent between 9 and 10. So I, I know that in, right, well, in the Wheaton district the, there are some garages that start at 9. Here it seems to be that, that it's the ending time that is where you're losing the yes. revenue. Mm -hmm. Did you consider like, okay, let's say we push it to midnight, but we make it start at 9 a.m. So the employee, we give the, the people who work here, mm -hmm. who are parking every day, are the ones who get the break, but the people who come for the Fillmore, they have to pay. I mean, you know, like, if there's any looking at <coughs> that, we have, I don't know, just, so you know, did you guys like think about that in your mm -hmm. calculus? So the way we look at, we keep on street at 9 a.m. because we do not want to have people parking there during rush yeah, hour. So we want to provide that off-street parking at 7 is what we've traditionally done. But that is, no, but I mean, that is oh, something we haven't looked at. Yes. But I'm saying the ones without the gate, you can park before then. You just don't, like in Wheaton, you can park at any time. They just don't start charging you until That's nine. correct. So if you, for someone who got there every day at 7.30, because mm -hmm. you're uh, in garage, whatever, 40 it is, take the metro, mm -hmm. you have that first, you get that hour free. Right, yep. and yep. you still have to pay your whole day after that. Yeah. Um, but you know, it uh, in the right in the gated garage, it's more challenging. But in the well, in the gated garages, you still only pay during the hours of payment. So you, if you come in at six o'clock, right, right, you're not paying till seven. You're not paying till seven. Right. I was just thinking, like, if you're thinking of going till midnight, you're 
but you let them, people who park early in the morning, you move the hour so it starts at 8, it goes till midnight, in terms of the paying. But the gates open, you know what I mean? So, yeah. because you're, then you're privileging the people who are working here, you're not hurting the employees, but you're maybe making more money off the people who come to people eat, that come go to movies, wrong. and you know, and only in these two and not in the peripheral garages. Yeah, that that is a variation that we can we can definitely look at. So you you make do, money off the nighttime economy. Just so I understand, yeah. do you um, I you know. do have the authority to fool around with the hours opening and closing? The rates you don't. They set certain. I mean, you're, the you're hours of out, operating the garage. <laughs> so I have, if I can fit it in my budget, I can pay people to be here longer, but I cannot charge for longer. to do to change these closing hours for example no the payment hours okay. and the payment rates are fixed i cannot i i cannot change them yeah but in the new system that's what you are advocating that you have flexibility to change hours and fees based on demand, demand and trends and things like that yes you know there, there's another part i think you just mentioned it which is the, the nighttime economy and in Silver Spring on Georgia Avenue and right around that area, a lot of, lot of energy um, mm -hmm. associated with those spots. And if we're not charging any of that, you know, I'm thinking I go to Adams Morgan every once in a while. And mm -hmm. You got the parking garages there. You're paying yeah. a, a, quite a bit of, of money, but at least you know your car is safe and you're going to be close to it. Mm -hmm. What about, I guess, picking particular. Um, garages that are located near spots and saying, you know what, we're going to offer a premium service at this garage, mm -hmm. which is we'll have, you know, staff and security and all that type of stuff, but we're charging also, and, but your, your car is going to be safe and we're going to, uh, have you guys thought about that one as well? Um, yeah, we, we, we have, but again, that requires more flexibility for us. So now, we have to have the ability of charging during certain months, during certain hours, during certain locations only, and that too late at night when we typically don't charge. So I would have to have 24-hour charging capability. So we, that's not part of all of this equation at this point, but that is an idea that we can definitely look into in the future. I would think that though that's, you mentioned the thing that you have a special deal with Discover, mm -hmm. right? You get kind of a corporate rate. But it's well, not a corporate rate, just well, a corporate way of paying. A corporate way of paying. All right, yeah. but they but they also give you a minimum amount of uh, whatever. You said 100 yeah. people a month, yeah. whatever it is. I mean, couldn't you do something sort of similar like that with various restaurants, nightclubs in this entertainment district that has right really grown? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm assuming again the county council would have to give you the the authority to do something like that. But well, with the nighttime economy, the, the challenge right now is we don't charge during those hours. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. if so we were big, allowed to charge on Friday, Saturdays, and I don't know if it's Sunday too, but let's say Friday and Saturday for now up until 2 p.m. when all the bars are open. 2 a.m. Uh, 2 a.m., sorry. Tractor for a right here. <laughs> Well, or when they're legally supposed to be open. Uh, so if I had that authority, yes, we could, we could do that. Well, so you don't at this time? No, right at this time I don't. The hours and the rate of payment are fixed. And we want to encourage that flexibility in, in this. Uh, but again, we're not, I'm, in this proposal that I have, both of them, we're still only looking at going to 10 p.m. and maybe adding a Saturday or a Sunday. Uh, in year three. Right. That was you thinking about these garages, yes. not thinking about the parking by all the bars. Exactly. Which is a little different. Yeah. And, that, and, and that may be worth looking deeper into, I think, the nighttime economy because it is growing in downtown Silver Spring. Um, you know, these restaurants and bars and uh, clubs and venues, they're seeing a lot of people coming out and uh, there's a lot of free parking, and yeah. one thing that people really want, and I, I'm, I was the, the co-chair of the Silver Spring Safety and Security Task Force, mm -hmm. which is 
the people want to feel safe. And so if you bring in additional revenue in that way, uh, working along with the urban district and the police department, everybody's trying to tackle, we want people to feel safe at night. And this was the nighttime economy is a, is a really big um, push. Now we're seeing the fruits of that labor. Yeah. Well, I think parking would be a great opportunity uh, to, to get some revenue and be part of the solution for feeling safe at home. Yep, that's that's correct. And like you said, the garage, the new garage three there, right there in uh, Tear and Silver Spring, um, that's a wonderfully lit facility. It's brand new. It has the capacity, and uh, yeah, that would that would make sense. Okay, so any other feedback that you guys, this was the last slide, I believe, and then it was questions, but, oh. yeah, well, but I we've been. Picture question, and mm -hmm. from my impression, the county council is trying to do more, get people to do more bicycling, pedestrians, mm -hmm. so using the purple line and whatever. Um, I would think a county council person who really believes in that strongly would come to you and say, I mean, first of all, I think they'd like you to raise rates in order to discourage driving, right? They want you to use public transportation. They want us to use public transportation. Um, but then, so I would, I guess the idea is, I just think it would be tough for you. You're encouraging people to drive. That's kind of your job. I, you know, I'm not saying well, that's a negative, yeah. but that's the role you play. But the county itself wants the people, wants folks to decrease driving. Correct. So again, I, I am the PLD is part of the Department of Transportation, and you know we are very engaged into the long-term vision we we want to we know that maybe 20 years 30 years from now there is not going to be this demand for all this parking things are going to change there are connected vehicles automated vehicles all these things coming down the pipe we realize that but there's that transition time that we still have to be so get the money while we can I don't it, think it's, that not, it's not necessarily no get the money you've got the infrastructure yeah let's take advantage of it, it it's not only take advantage of it it's make proper use of it so we can manage the demand. So if we want to discourage traffic in the downtown area during an event, let's use parking pricing as a tool to do that. Let's price it so that it costs more to come and park right next to that event. And it costs less to park somewhere else where you walk. Or you take the metro and park at uh, garage five and then walk over or take the van go over to the event. So there, we can use that as a tool, yes. I have two questions, and I don't know if you guys touched upon this and I walked out, but have you modeled what the possibility of like revenue would be once the purple line gets here? Because I would assume that there could be potential people like um, that may be you know, typically driving to like New Carrollton, for example, they mm -hmm. may park now and you know, get down here in downtown Silver Spring and take the purple line. So I don't know, I'm just curious, have you looked into that and seen? We, we haven't modeled it, but uh, I, we looked at some of what the, I think the state did some modeling. They did not, their studies didn't show that there would be a lot of people driving and using, parking in our garages and using the purple line. But, you know, I think it'll be a combination. It'll be a transition. Again, initially we might see some of that and then slowly that'll die down. Uh, but we do have the capacity in Silver Spring to accommodate that, if that happens. Um, I, from what I've heard is that I think the garage on what Silver Spring Ave, I don't know what number that is, um, is typically underutilized. Yes, that's. So, and like I said, you might have already discussed this, is that are you considering possibly um, selling that property maybe to make get some revenue there or selling that garage? Uh, I mean, when you say sure Silver Spring I Avenue, uh, I'm, you mean uh, the, the one by the Greyhound? The new I don't know one? Which one that, I, am I getting the wrong the name? One by the I'm Greyhound. new to Silver Spring. Okay, area, Garage so. Four. So oh, Garage four. four is is a facility where we do not open the uh, upper oh. level. Yeah. There are some issues with the garage that we cannot do it. We have to keep it closed, uh, and it costs a lot of money to fix it and. 
that's again one of the locations where we're looking for a joint development you know in okay. the future maybe we redevelop this maybe we keep some parking uh, or depending on when the development happens I mean I think that's actually a popular garage yes it mm -hmm. is a very yeah, popular garage cool. but mm -hmm. people it's 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 not a, Super clean, uh, lighted yeah, well, and yeah, doesn't, it doesn't facility. feel fresh. But yeah. it is a popular garage. People do, you know, they yeah. use a lot of the levels. Yeah. Yeah, because there are restaurants down yeah. there. But structurally, there's some issues, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Plus, there's a little school next to it, and when yeah. they have school activities, people use that garage as well. So That's correct. And church, churches, churches use, use it on Sundays. Yeah. Yeah, from yeah. my understanding, I think the school wants to rebuild and get bigger. Really? They school. just popped the top. They just put on a second story. I think they want to go Another even more. One? He was looking for really? Oh, wow. Okay. Did, uh, you guys alluded to the electric cars earlier. Mm -hmm. um, in your kind of thinking towards the future, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about fixing the elevators. You guys thinking about the cost of putting in more? Stations. Yeah. yeah, so we are we are looking at that too. So what the easier locations we've already done. So where we have the electrical capacity to do it, yeah. we've already yeah. done. Yeah. The locations where we have to do more now mm. requires beefing up the power, which is mm. a significant right. cost. I, just, I, I, didn't, I didn't see that in your list of your CIP list, so I didn't know yeah. where that so, is on the... So we, and, and what we have right now, uh, most of them, they allow you to charge within four hours. We can split them and make them two spaces that charge within eight hours, so you can park overnight or park in the morning. And they're fairly, I would say, we still do have capacity. They're utilized, but we do have capacity. Yet we're not full. No. But you could, you know, there's the fast charging ones mm -hmm. that you could, I would imagine, could charge a premium for. But, you know, in 20 yeah. minutes, supposedly, you get a charge of 80% of your car. Now, those, that would be, that's a possible revenue source. That, that is, but it comes with a very large capital cost. So a typical charging station costs about six, $7,000. A fast charging station costs about $100,000. Chat, one of those I, oh, that's why I thought they called the fast charge point. The super fast one. Oh, well, yeah, D charge DC point. fast charge, there's a lot of different ones. That's good to yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, the capital cost differences and the infrastructure differences, the, the amount yeah, of infrastructure you need to support that, the electrical power. I see. Okay. Yeah. I know this isn't necessarily something governments do very much, but an advertising campaign to increase awareness um, of people's options and stuff mm -hmm. like that, uh, or a, a reinvestment in, in making something look a lot nicer um, in a way. Have you guys looked in, into, I know sp spending money, but spending money to make money. True, we, so like, uh, like you said, we typically don't market too much because we don't want to be seen as we want you to drive. We're, again, our long-term goal is to support the reduction in greenhouse gases through the transportation sector. So we're trying to encourage transit. But during this transition time, we do have to have parking available too. So we're trying to balance both of those needs. So yeah, we do not market parking. We do not spend a single dime on marketing. But maybe we should look at some creative. Yeah, I think uh, if you cast it as a public education program, um, I mean, and just talk about all the different transportation options, park and drive, yeah, so we do, We try and do that through our website and things like that, but we don't actually do, you know, like pay somebody or have dollars spent on marketing. But uh, but it's it's definitely worth looking into. I mean, for even us at the Civic Building, we created an Instagram page and a Facebook page and all those things, and you know, it's good for the next generation. They they like to see stuff on their phone, and I'm not saying that yep. they would necessarily follow 
parking lot district, but you well, never we, know. We do have a Facebook account, we have a YouTube channel, we have a social media, <laughs> we Twitter, have we, have, we have all of those things. And we do have quite a few people and they use it when it snows and when they want to know what's going on with parking, is it free on this holiday or not. We, we have all of those things. Uh, but again, uh, getting to the people that you know use it for monthly parking or for AM, PM parking and all the businesses for their employees, we don't do that marketing as much. Well, I think if major changes are going to be made, that would be a justification for investing in some marketing to let people know what they're coming and what they need to know yeah. as users of the facility. Absolutely. <coughs> So are there any other questions or any comments or anything that you uh, want me to take note of? The, the intent of all of this again is I'm going to compile a lot of these comments and it's going to go back uh, as recommendations for the FY21 operating budget. As this is what we heard from all of the people that we talked to uh, in all of these four different li listening sessions and uh, see how we can incorporate that into the budget. <laughs> I've heard a lot of uh, different things from different folks, but not necessarily the transportation department. Does the money that Silver Spring parking lot district mm -hmm. make would stay in the Silver Spring, or does it go to Wheaton and Bethesda? Every dime that is brought into the parking lot district is spent in the parking lot district and the CBD. The only way it is spent outside is if we do a transfer or a loan which has been done from time to time. Uh, years earlier Bethesda loaned Silver Spring PLD money because the PLD uh, wasn't doing too well. Some time back Bethesda wasn't doing too well. Silver Spring loaned money to Bethesda and they repaid it back. So that's the only time those kind of transfers happen. Uh, but with the PLD tax set to zero and the ability to transfer out is very limited other than through that loan mechanism which is again pointed out in budget documents so and all public documents so really all the money that comes in is in silver spring is spent in silver spring yes yeah um one thing i think you should take note of is the suggestion about um, advertising, um, digital, specifically digital advertising within your, your space. Um, I do notice that you do have a, a, an image downstairs in that parking garage that says, hey, advertise with us. Yeah. And it's a static on board. Yeah. But you know, if you think about um, all the businesses that would love to actually get eyeballed on their products, especially mm -hmm. on the fourth or fifth level with the um, the mall, where people yep. are entering and exiting the mall, mm -hmm. that might be a great space to put some digital advertising yep. for people to, um, for you know, as a benefit for the small businesses that are in the area. That yeah, that that is themselves. that is a great suggestion, and we realized it quickly. You know, we're not the marketing experts. We tried it. We that that sign and that uh, static sign is not going to cut it. So we're going to let the experts have at it and and try and see what they can do for us. Yes. Yep. just be familiar to people and something ha they would expect. Absolutely. We did some research on that. I reached out to New York and to Miami. They both do this. Uh, the firms that do this said, yes, it's possible. It does generate some revenue, but they cautioned that it's not a yeah. large revenue stream. It's, it's right. minimum. Modest. Modest. <laughs> well, I mean, but if you think about it, too, we, the jumbo trucks, Fairly, fairly recent, maybe the last five years, mm -hmm. right. and uh, we get a lot of advertisements on there, and then we also get to put community events on there as well, which is is nice. And, uh, it might be a, might be worth looking into. Yeah. So, so the ad av program that we were talking about is internal. Now, external advertising is a whole different animal. So that that has some other challenges that we have to go through before we can we can do that. Is there anything else that I can answer for you or anybody else?
questions, comments? All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for showing up. Uh, it was a beautiful day today, so we can't complain about the weather. But thank you for, for taking the time to come here and uh, engage with us. So thank you.